All right, so welcome to the second segment of the course, which is about remembering. So segment number one or step one was understand. Step two is remember. And as a reminder, step three is focus. So we'll talk a lot more about kind of distractions and motivations and procrastination, and all that kind of stuff in the focus segment. But now we're going to be d diving into all of the evidence based tips for remembering slash memorizing things. But again, just to reiterate, understanding is the most important part. And without understanding, there's literally no point in memorizing or remembering stuff because, you know, we're just making more work for ourselves. And the knowledge is more fragile that way if it's just kind of bits that we remember rather than bits that we actually understand and we can apply to our lives. So step one is always understand, but step two is remember. And in this video, we're going to be talking about spaced repetition. Uh, if you have heard me talk ad nauseum about spaced repetition over the last few years of being on, on the YouTube, then please feel free to skip this video because there's nothing new here. I'm just rehashing old, old content as it were. But it's really important because while active recall is the single most important aspect of efficient studying, spaced repetition is the second most important aspect of efficient studying. What's the problem here that we're trying to solve? And as I mentioned in the previous section, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to combat the forgetting curve. So in the 1800s, there was a chap called Ebbinghaus who did a, a study on himself where he made himself memorize all these random, random words that he just kind of made up. And he tested how quickly and how often he forgot what these words were. Uh, and he realized that, you know, as soon as he learned a word, his memory for that word decayed exponentially over time. But if he interrupted that forgetting by testing himself on the word again and then looking it up, he interrupted that curve and then he went back up to 100%. But then he found that crucially, it took him longer to forget it the second time around. But then when he forgot a little bit and he studied it again, it took him even longer still. So while the decay is very precipitous to begin with, the more times you repeat a topic, the longer it then takes for you to forget that information. And this is the key insight that the whole of kind of the industry and the algorithms around spaced repetition are based around. It's this idea that the more we repeat stuff, the longer it takes to forget it. But the longer it takes to forget it means that we should space our repetitions of that topic over time. So let's say we're studying a topic on day one, let's say we've studied, I don't know, thyroid function tests or the thyroid, you know, let's go for the thyroid, let's keep it simple. Let's say we study the thyroid on like today. By tomorrow, we'll probably have forgotten about 50% of it. And by three days, we'll have forgotten like all of it because it decays exponentially in the early stages. So let's say we revise it again tomorrow. Now our learning for it goes back to back up to 100%. But now it takes, let's say a week to forget 50% of it. So then in a week, we come back to it and we study it. And then it, let's say it takes a month to forget 50% of it. So we we've repeated it like a day, a week and a month later, but at spaced intervals. And that's the idea behind spaced repetition. So when I first discovered spaced repetition, it was again in, in the second year medical school lecture on psychology, which was all about the psychology of effective learning. And this was one of the concepts that like when we first heard about it in that lecture, everyone was like looking around in wonder at one another because we were like, oh my God, this is absolutely game changing. Because in the past, I'd always tried to make like these revision timetables, but I just never really appreciated the fact that just by by virtue of the way memory works, my memory for everything was just going to decay exponentially over time. And so once I discovered the power of spaced repetition, I realized that I could scientifically choose when to revise certain things to maximize the chances that I'm going to retain them. And what's also at play here is this idea that, you know, that theme that runs through this entire class, which is that the more effortful learning feels, the harder we have to work to learn something or to retrieve something, the more likely that information is to stick. So let's say I were to read about the thyroid today and then an hour later and then an hour later. Uh, the, the, you know, reading it like three times in one day would be a little bit pointless because I haven't forgotten any of it. I haven't like allowed myself to forget any of it. Therefore, my brain is not working to retain that information or to retrieve that information. Instead, it's just a passive process. And again, like we've said many times before, whenever learning anything or studying or revision becomes passive, like, you know, we're playing the guitar and we're just kind of bashing out passively to songs we already know, we are not learning anything at all. It's when learning is hard, like when we're playing those new chords or that new fingering or whatever, that sounds weird, um, in, in the guitar or on the piano, it's when it's difficult that we actually learn and we can consolidate that information. It's the same with learning anything for exams or whatever you're learning. The more difficult it is, the more strongly that information is going to stick. And I will keep on repeating that every single video pretty much. Um, but the idea behind spaced repetition is that we allow ourselves to forget some of it. And we don't beat ourselves up for forgetting it because we know that's a natural part of learning. We allow ourselves to forget some of it. And so when we retrieve that information with active recall and revise the subject, it means that we're working harder for it. Therefore, that information is more likely to stick. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say on that front. Um, I'll put a link to my YouTube video here in the video description somewhere. Uh, if you're interested in the evidence behind space repetition, I've got like a 25 minute long video where I break down some of the actual studies they've done 
that show the power of spaced repetition. So if you're not sold on it just based on what I'm telling you on the camera, if that's fine, you can watch that video and that'll give you a lot more information. Uh, but now let's move on to talk about some of the ways in which we can practically apply the concept of spaced repetition to our own studying to supercharge our productivity and to make sure we remember the stuff that we need to remember. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.